Hi everyone and welcome to tonight's webinar. We're up to webinar four or level four on the amazing Level Up program, a digital upskilling program offered to you by Sunshine Coast Council. Tonight we've got another really informative chat for you talking about using more video in your business. So we did market this and mentioned things like screen sharing and video conferencing and then the course of putting this material together I've expanded the topic even more, and I'm really thrilled to have a really fantastic guest on tonight who will, uh, is a real expert in this field that I'll introduce you to in just a moment. Before I go into um, introducing him and the content, I wanted to make sure you're aware uh, about the Level Up program. Some of you who might be on today might be uh, program participants and very aware of it, so I won't keep you long. But some of you might have just seen this webinar somewhere and thought, that looks quite good, I'll jump on that. And if that's the case, we want to make sure you know what you're participating in. So the Level Up program is a Sunshine Coast Council funded program, as I said. It's aimed at helping small and medium businesses connect to the NBN or faster internet where available. And basically by getting faster internet, start to utilize different digital tools are out there that are out there like video. And that can be um, doing more innovative things with the way you do business systems, processes and so on. And through all of that, try and become more productive, save time on things, um, or in, uh, create efficiencies, also become more profitable or make more money, and therefore be, have the ability to compete on a national or international level if that's what you want to do. So we're very excited to bring this to you tonight. Um, my name is Yvette Adams. For those of you I haven't met before, I won't talk to you too much about myself um, because there are other bios of me on other sessions, but the accent you're hearing is a Kiwi one. I've been in business a long time. Um, I've started six businesses and sold two. Um, did my first acquisition of a business even a couple of months ago. Right now I'm running three businesses. So the Creative Collective is a digital marketing company here on the Sunshine Coast. Training Collective Digital Skills Training Organization, also based here on the Sunshine Coast. Both of those companies are doing business all over Australia and internationally though. And we're proud to be Sunshine Coast businesses with lots of team here. And awardshub.com, which is an online business awards portal that you can find business awards to enter. So my company successfully tended to develop and deliver this program. We're always very open to feedback. First time a program like this has been put together. Um, but we hope that this format webinars, short one hour, and whether you're listening to this live tonight or watching the recording thereafter, hopefully find that one hour to learn and find out some new cool tools and ways of doing things that you can apply to your business and move forwards. So I'd now like to introduce you to Ben. And I find uh, there's a few bullet points on the screen. I won't read those out because you're all more than capable of doing that. Um, but Ben, thanks for getting on with us tonight. Thanks, Yvette. Thanks for having me. No problem. So I couldn't think of a better person on the coast to ask uh, to be our topic expert on this session than you, um, because you absolutely live and breathe video stuff, don't you? Absolutely. It's what we do every day in the business, um, but also what I'm really passionate about. And one of the things I'm particularly passionate about is educating others about how to use video effectively. So uh, yeah, good fit. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. No worries. Glad you were free. I know you're a busy guy. And um, how long have you been in this video space for? I could say all my life. Um, I've been passionate about video since my my dad basically uh, had a an old VHS video camera from when we were very young. But to skip ahead a few years, um, I started the business uh, about eight years ago. And uh, since then, from a base of video production, um, I'm working with Everything from weddings through to small businesses producing video content. We now really specialize in online video and online video strategy for businesses across Australia now. So that's the that's the short history. Thank you. Yeah, there's many years condensed in those sentences, many experiences. Um, and the other thing probably worthy of note, which I can't believe I've actually left off here, but I know we definitely put it in the outgoing marketing about tonight's session. You're also uh, a digital champion for Queensland government, which is why we also thought you were more than worthy recipient of this. Um, tell us about that and maybe anything you've been doing since you've become a digital champion. Yeah, sure. So the digital champions program is, uh, I'm one of uh, quite a few on the Sunshine Coast actually have been recognised now, which is a really great thing for the Sunshine Coast um, and really uh, says a lot about the ecosystem we have up here. But effectively, the program is all about helping uh, or championing people who are focused on helping businesses become more digitally savvy. And uh, that's something obviously we do 
for profit in the business, but it's also something that I'm, I have been over the last couple of years really consciously doing, um, you know, outside of the, the core business that we do. So I run monthly webinars myself um, on online video strategy and they're free to attend, I run regular um, face-to-face workshops as well. And also um, about to launch a podcast focused on storytelling for business. So that's, um, you know, fits into digital skills as well. So, you know, that, that's the kind of thing I'm doing with creating content to hopefully educate people. Great. So um, I'm sure you'll let everyone know um, if they're keen on finding out more about what you do and how they can do more learning and video. If they feel that this is a good fit for their business, we'll let them know of some options uh, later tonight, won't we? Absolutely. Yes. Cool. So over to the content, I guess the first good question to ask is why video? So I went and grabbed some um, stats about video, but I mean, these stats are pretty hard to keep up with, aren't they? Um, Ben, can you rattle off others that blow your mind, even though you work in the space all the time? Look, it changes all the time. And I think, you know, anyone who's, who's uh, a digital consumer and particularly on social media, will see more and more video pretty much every time they log on. So in that social media space in particular, the stats are uh, mind blowing. Um, something like on YouTube alone, uh, there are, uh, there's something like four years worth of content uploaded every minute on YouTube. So, I mean, that that's just overwhelming for most business people. Um, but I think that there's pros and cons to that. And I think that even though these stats on the screen are overwhelming, what that says to me is that video is where we need to be playing in business. We can't ignore it. And it's something that if we, uh, it, that if we do ignore, then it's potentially at the peril of growing our business and staying up with what's going on in, in the world today. Because I guess we could say, well, if there's that much video going up, why would I bother creating video? I'm just going to be a tiny pebble in a sea of huge amounts of information. But there are a lot of compelling uh, reasons why you would look, want to look at video, wouldn't you? So let's look at those. So, I mean, producing video has become a lot easier. And I think those two pictures really do tell, paint a thousand words. Um, you've written pro or con though. What makes you say that, Ben? So I think this is at the at the real crux of what we can talk about tonight and hopefully by the end of this webinar you'll see video as a as a pro for your business but potentially the idea that video has become easy to produce can be seen as a negative like you said it's overwhelming um the ease of production of content so the fact that you've got a high quality video camera in your pocket basically in your smartphone means that there's so much more content out there than there ever was before so it is hard to stand out and so for many business owners they end up going with the head in the sand approach of it's all too hard how can i create content that's going to actually make a you know make a dent in my business i talk about the idea of there's so much content out there that it's it's almost an avalanche of average content and where you need to as a business when you're considering using video where you need to be playing is not by just adding to that avalanche of average content instead to look at creating quality content or strategic content or clever content or personal content and using that to make a difference in your business. Yeah, absolutely. So I think in the context of this program, just to remind you, video becomes a really viable option to produce it, whether it's by your phone or via other channels. And like Ben's saying, to definitely give it some thought because of the advent of um, faster internet. So before we just couldn't consume video, I'm sure we all remember the buffering days and some places still experience that, but more and more we are able to produce video and consume video a lot easier too, can't we? Yeah, absolutely. Everything's easier these days. And, you know, I think what we need to do is just to be clever about it, not just um, create video for the sake of video. And on the next slide, we can talk through that, that idea. The idea that for most businesses, if you have a look at the left of this table here, unfortunately, most businesses are still looking at video from a, a tactical standpoint rather than a strategic standpoint. And that's the what I call a form approach, which is video for video's sake. And that, that's saying basically they go through this thought process of number one, we need to do a video. So maybe they attend a, a workshop like this or a webinar and they go, yep, we need to do a video. Okay, so what do we make a video about? And then they make that video or they pay someone to make it and then they work out what to do with it afterwards. So you're approaching it in that order. You're coming at it from video for video's sake, which isn't the most effective. The way that I encourage people to think about videos from a strategic approach, which is looking at video as a solution, not just a product. 
So instead, the thought process should be, we need to improve what in our business? We need to improve something in our business. Maybe it's more awareness of our brand. We need more people to hear about us. Or maybe we uh, you know, need to improve conversions through our websites and make more sales. Or maybe we just need to get more people talking about us online through our social media channels. Like, What do we need to improve in our business? And what's the best way to do that is the next question that you ask. If the answer to that question is video, then you de define the creative and technical approach to make that happen. And then finally, with all of that in mind, you plan for the distribution and what metrics you're going to measure to determine success. Okay, so too many businesses are looking at just making a video, sticking it somewhere and counting how many views they got. And if you don't understand why you're doing that in your business, then you're effectively not creating content that's going to move the needle for you. You're not going to get a return on investment and potentially it's going to be a waste of time and just contribute to that avalanche of average. So I'm not going to go too much further in that in this webinar, but just because you've got the tools and high speed internet enables people to consume it better, it doesn't mean that you just need to just create content for the sake of creating content. Think about your business first. Really good points you've raised there, um, Ben, and really good things to get people thinking in terms of strategy instead of tactical. But I think um, this slide will really illustrate to people how video can solve problems, the problems that you're mentioning, you know, what do you want to solve? Because I think initial people do think of it as possibly just the promotional marketing side of things, but video can do a whole lot more than that in your business, can't it? Absolutely. Video is, is a lot more than just advertising. People often um, think about video from a more traditional sense of, you know, video advertising like TV commercials or, or documentaries or something like that. Now that's certainly part of a potential use for video within your business, um, but there's so much more than that. So video is really a tool these days that can empower more productivity and profit in your business. And some of the things that you see on the screen there that we're gonna dive into a bit later in the webinar around using video tools to help communicate more effectively with your team or your clients, to build relationships and trust with your market, to tell stories, to train staff, content marketing through video. It's kind of endless, but that's where that strategy comes in into play. If you can think about what it is that you need to achieve in your business, what needle do you need to move, then you can understand what tool you need to use to make that happen. Because we're actually doing video now, whether you guys realize that or not. Yes, this is live and we're streaming via webinar, but that is a video technology and this will become a recording that you can all watch. So just as we are doing this right now, you too could be creating, sharing your knowledge on whatever area you're an expert on and or creating staff training. I know I love cutting that staff training and um, we'll talk a bit about it a bit more, but uh, not having to do that task again and sit there and explain to new staff and new contractors as they come and go. It's really nice to say, go watch that video and then ask me questions. Do you do that in your business too, Ben? So we do, and it's something that we're planning on doing a lot more of. Um, as, as my business grows and expands, we have the issue of staff onboarding, whereby it, it can't be me every time that sits down and talks a new staff member through how we do things in the business. So we've, we've got a, a plan in place of recording basically screen captures of, uh, of the tasks that we do on online platforms and doing that just as a, as a training tool. And then it's just uh, stored in a, in basically a, a wiki or a little website for internally for our team. And once it's done, it's done. That's right. It doesn't have to be a long piece, even three minutes just to explain a concept will perhaps do. So we've been doing some talking and I'd really encourage you guys to now text chat in um, of how does your business currently use video in your business? Do you use it at all or just thinking about it? Or are you maybe creating the odd thing on a camera, on a video, um, on a phone, or are you actually doing it for something more strategic like staff training and so on? So text chat in so we can get an idea of where you're all at and we can interact. So moving on, I love, Ben, that you made my slides much more interactive than I was clever enough to do. So just so you all know, that thing on the right, Dixon Plumbing, I didn't do that. Ben added that. Um, but this is, um, I guess, an option to create news video that you do a lot of in your business, don't you? Absolutely. The core of what we do at Innovate Media is create strategic video content for our clients. Um, and 
you know, being clever about how you use that content, but also what you're aiming to achieve with that content is where you can really make a difference. And we're going to go through over the next handful of slides, some of the ways, not all of them, but some of the ways that you can possibly uh, consider using video more effectively in your business. Um, and as Yvette pointed out on the screen there, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about GIFs later, but GIFs are something uh, that are much more popular and more cleverly and widely used, particularly on social media and in blog posts these days. So GIFs are those little uh, looping, moving images that you see, which are kind of like a cross between a video and a still image. Mm. And I mean, on these two examples, I guess it looks like the owners or principals of those companies are humanizing the brand, as you suggest, which is great. But if the very thought of that uh, puts fear in your soul, which I know it does for some people, don't forget, you can also utilize um, staff on your team who might be happy to be show ponies or clients or contractors or suppliers who might be more than happy to talk positively about your brand and create content as well. Right, Ben? That's right. The power of storytelling is something that I'm really passionate about and something that really does make content more engaging. The idea behind telling stories, whether it be the stories behind your brand or the people behind your brand, your staff, your clients, uh, those experiences that those clients have with your brand, whether that be a, real, a, a formal storytelling approach or whether that be just more sharing, uh, you know, short little stories that happen throughout the day uh, as people engage with your with your business day to day it humanizes a brand and allows people to connect on a much more emotional level because at the end of the day people don't buy what you do they buy, they buy why you do it um, and there's a great ted talk by a guy called simon cynic um, which some of you may have come across which is worth looking into to dive into that concept further but if you're going to start anywhere with video and this is video primarily for for brand awareness or, or building awareness of your brand start by telling stories Good. and I'll just leave it there for now for the sake of time. Fair enough because we do have quite a few things to cover and time always flies and we're having fun on these. So next up I think this is the as I mentioned the thing that a lot of people think of and that's creating promotional videos or ad campaigns. So I don't know and you might like to text in if you, some of you online tonight are doing Facebook ads and I'm not just talking boosting posts I'm talking using uh, Facebook business manager and you know mobilizing actual video campaigns and so on um, or any kind of ad campaigns but did you know that you can upload videos and run video ads on Facebook you can run them on YouTube as well so there's a couple of examples on the screen uh, that our company has run with some really great success in fact I would dare say that video gets some of our biggest successes in terms of cost per view and just sheer reach um, do you find the same when you're working with video content and ads um, with your clients Ben? Look video is and as we said before is something that's you know gone through a bit of an explosion in particularly in social media platforms over the last six to 12 months. Um, there are preferences in Facebook and Instagram and Google to video content. So they actually show it to more people organically without you paying to promote it. But as Yvette's mentioned there, um, using video ad creative as part of your say Facebook ad campaigns or YouTube ads is another really effective way to get your message out there very, very quickly. And the thing is people want to watch video People don't want to watch ads, but people do want to watch video in many cases. Yeah, and they don't need to be long and um, there's all sorts of ways to create them. So on this next slide here is one kind of video you can do. You might have seen ads like this yourself and gone, they're pretty cool. I wonder what's involved in creating those. So I've put a few tools on there that I was aware of. I know you've added one video scribe to Ben, of all these tools that yep. can create these um, explainer videos, um, do you have a favorite or is there one that's better for certain situations that you could recommend to the audience? Look at Animoto at the top of the list there is, is uh, a great tool for not just explainer videos, but for, for social video content or content to use in social media without needing to use a professional video producer. Um, it's a very easy tool to use yourself. Um, there is some cost involved. There are like paid plans, basically. Powtoon, the second one there, is much more focused on creating animated explainer videos similar to, you know, the little walking guy you see across the screen there. Um, 
that kind of animated explainer is great for explaining more processes or uh, specifics of a of a service or product. Not so much about telling stories, but um, it's a great tool to to use if you are looking to create content and experiment with using video. And there's some questions and comments coming up on the side, and we're absolutely going to get to the questions at the end. But um, Stevens just mentioned that it's great to it's easy to create poor content. And I think that's a very important point to, to note here is that, like I said at the outset there, if you haven't got the strategy right and you don't understand why you're using that content, even having these tools available to you sometimes isn't really enough or it can be a bit of a distraction. I think it's much better to focus on knowing why you're creating video and experimenting with tools like this to create video um, and try and get your message out there. But don't just create content because you can. Don't just contribute to the avalanche of average. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point that the um, person online has contributed. But I mean, yeah, I'm a little bit clever, but I remember I thought, you know, I'm going to check these explainer videos out. And I went on Powtoon and it literally took me about half an hour to create a three minute piece, which I was quite happy with and which explained a concept for one of my businesses. So even as a rough sort of creative board, you could use them. Um, and I like using them as well for complex products when it's something industrial or how something works, it's technology, it's software. They can be really quite helpful for those, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. Like I think that's where explainer videos, that particular form of video is particularly useful is explaining a, a concept in a very easy and visual way. And if you can't explain your concept yourself or you're just not a good storyteller, then you should engage the services of someone like Ben to simplify it and really pull it out of you. So on this next slide, um, Clever Ben has once again done a bit of a GIF and um, he's pulled in, I guess, the Crowdcast uh, look and feel. So some of you, if you weren't aware, you can totally listen to these webinars on tablet or phone or desktop. So you've got all the options available to you, whether it's watching it live or watching the recording. Um, but, you know, making webinars is not just something that, uh, you know, companies like mine that might have got contracted by council can do. Um, it used to be expensive to access the software. Um, we started in the webinar game back in 2010, I think it was. Um, and they've got progressively cheaper and better. Um, so I might just mention my thoughts on webinars and then see if you've got experience with these because you did mention you've got, you do the lunchtime webinars too, Ben. Um, we started on WebEx, found it very corporate and clunky back in the day, though I think they've innovated since. We moved to go to webinar. It is about $100 a month for 100 users. So that can be a bit on the high side if you're not using it regularly and if you're not charging for webinars to recoup that for a small business. Um, we switched to Crowdcast, which is the platform we're using for this very session now. It's about 60 or 70 US a month. So it is a good cost saving. It's really intuitive and easy to use. And it's got some nice integrations, great support, and they do keep updating um, bits and pieces like the ability, for instance, to live stream to Facebook or YouTube now, which I think is a really nice feature. Um, I've not used Webinar Jam, but I knew, do know of um, a lot of other small businesses that use it. And if a webinar must have been one you added there, Ben, what's your thoughts on all this technology? Got any favorites or experiences to impart with the audience? Yeah, look like anything, there's multiple options and, you know, you've you got to try and choose the right tool for your particular needs. Um, the uh, go-to webinar, as you mentioned before, I've had some experience with, but uh, it can be cross, uh, cost prohibitive for a lot of businesses. So, um, and sometimes, particularly if you're starting out with webinars, probably not uh, the right platform to use. Um, webinar Jam and Ever Webinar are two that I've used um, quite extensively. Webinar Jam and Ever Webinar are created by the same company. And basically the difference is that Ever Webinar enables you to create a webinar once and just run it on autopilot. So if you're a, a, a coach or, a, or a, a leader in whatever niche area you're an expert in and you, you have a, a workshop that you can run as a webinar and then just have it run as a perpetual webinar uh, where people can register any time and it doesn't require you to actually be on the webinar. Uh, that's a really powerful tool ever webinar. So um, I think webinar jams, the same sort of thing as Crowdcast basically, but it uses the uh, YouTube live engine. So it's kind of backed by YouTube's uh, video engines, which is kind of cool. Um, and I've, that's what, that's what I use um, and run many successful webinars through that. I think it's about 400 US a year. Um, so yeah, there's still a cost involved in that, but it's a great tool. 
Cool. So yeah, as it says on the screen here, you could use this to communicate to prospects, to clients, um, but even to your team. Sometimes when you get a few people on some kind of video conference platform like Skype, um, it's not always that stable for six people or 12 people or, you know, if you're getting up to the 50 people, if you just want that capacity. So webinar platforms can be good to turn to in those moments. Um, here's another option for using video content. Um, how about email marketing as well? So both the screenshots here are two different email communications I've got in recent times. One on the left is for Brin, which is um, a downloadable free app that you can access lots of great business content. Um, I actually have a show on it for, called Young Entrepreneurs, where I interview bunches of young entrepreneurs doing really cool stuff. And what's awesome is often Shark Tank then features them once they've been on my show. So they seem to use us as a bit of a feeder ground. Um, but what's also exciting and worth mentioning, Sunshine Coast Council's moved into video in a big way. So if you haven't already subscribed, you should do so on their business news update. You can sign up for that on their website. And they give little clips um, of everything from rising business confidence to what the councillors are up to, to really cool local stories as well. Um, so video content and email marketing, Ben, do you have much demand from that from your clients or see it as a sort of growing opportunity? I think it's hugely a growing opportunity and underutilized. Uh, people get a lot of emails, uh, a lot of email newsletters or a term that I usually really dislike is the idea of an e-blast, which some people refer to it as. The idea that, um, you know, we've got some information we want to share with people, let's blast it out to them is not really, in my mind, good marketing. but um, email newsletters or using your email database to provide valuable information to your target market or to your client base um, or to your potential client base is really powerful. And because people are so busy these days and they don't have time to read, including video within your emails is one of, I think, a great way to get people to actually click on that, uh, on that email to open it and then to take the next the next step of actually reading or engaging with the content. In this case, with video watching the content. There's a, a pro tip you've got on the screen there, which I've thrown in there, is if you do include video within your email, because people are more likely uh, to, and I think the stat's actually 2.8 times more likely to open or click on an email with the word video in your subject line. So it actually increases the likelihood that your emails will be read. Obviously, you need to have a good quality video in there. Um, that provides some valuable information that people want to hear or, or see, but including just simply that, usually we, we use those square brackets in the word video at the beginning of a engaging subject line. And we've done some tests ourselves and it's, it's true. We get much better open rates when we've got that word video there. That's a great pro tip, Ben. I'll be stealing that one. Love it. Um, and I think another point to add is um, some people can't read. Um, the average literacy level in Australia is quite shockingly low. I believe it's at about 11 years old. And if you are targeting your younger audiences, they choose not to read. They would much rather consume video content having grown up in the social era. So they're things to take into consideration as well. Next up, um, options to create video content, the live streaming live feed thing. I think this is one of the most exciting and I think biggest growth areas out of all the options. Would you agree with that, Ben? Absolutely. And um, it, as you can see there, pretty much every major platform has got their live offering now and it seems to be growing and changing all the time. Um, there's been some great questions on the side there that um, to do with live and we'll, we'll get to specific questions at the end as well and be able to get through as many as we can. But you know, the thing is that these social platforms are starting to realize the power of video or well, more than starting, they have realized the power of video and they're making the most of it. And when it comes to live video, the ability for someone in business to simply open up their smartphone app and, and go live to their audience um, or to their network is really powerful. But again, with a strategy in place, don't press that go live button unless you know what it is that you're hoping to communicate to people and what you want them to do after hearing from that or hearing from you in that way. So Facebook Live, whether it be Instagram Live, YouTube Live or Periscope, which is effectively now Twitter Live, it's incorporated directly into the Twitter app. And then you've got other platforms like Snapchat and Livestream and Ustream. So we, we don't have time to go into all of those individually, but my, my best tip there is to consider how you can use Live in your business not as a way of creating formal marketing, but simply as a way of 
a sneak peek behind the scenes or um, just allowing people to get to know, like, and trust you and who you are and who your people are within your business on a much more personal level. People are on these social platforms for personal interaction with their friends, families, and brands they trust. So if you're going to use live, which I do encourage you to, think about how you're going to allow people to connect on a human level with you through your live streams. Yeah, really good points there. And um, this interesting backstory in this space, I don't know if you know the story, you probably do, Ben. Um, Meerkat was one of the early ones to market. It's not even on the list anymore. It's sort of dropped off because these other juggernauts have released similar products. But um, they were created. They approached Twitter and said, hey, buy us out. The uh, business negotiation didn't go that well. And uh, Twitter actually said, buggy, and then we're creating our own. And that's where Periscope came out. Had you heard that story before? Yeah, absolutely. And the reason why I deleted that line about Meerkat is because I read an article just this week to say that they're no longer supporting the, the program. So Meerkat is gone. Um, wow. Well, there you go. <laughs> this is really up to date content. Um, and the other things I would add is that we started off doing live stream and new stream and um, companies would actually contract us because it was such a new technology and they wanted people to, you know, offer that to them. But uh, we kind of don't offer that anymore because I feel that it's, it's, well, I think there is a time and a place for it, but there is so many options for people to do it themselves. And we've chosen to specialize in other areas. But like you say, Ben, it's such a good opportunity. You've just got to start thinking a little differently and go, great, well, I've got faster internet now. I'm going to be meeting someone really interesting today. How about I just live stream that out to everyone else? So even showing the associations you get or the information you get access to, um, unpackaging your latest shipment that's just got in of all your products so people feel like, wow, I'm getting the first look at this. And I don't know about you guys, but I must be a bit of a sticky beak because every time I get a little notification saying such and such has gone live, I'm super tempted to click on it and I sometimes guiltily do. How about you, Ben? Do you go and have a little sticky beak at who's doing what live? Yeah, for me, it really does depend on who is going live. And I think that I'm also very uh, quick to turn off if um, there's clearly no purpose to that per person going live. So I have certainly been excited and clicked on a live stream from someone that I that I followed or, or that I a friend or a, a brand that I like. Um, but if I then see that it's uh, someone just holding up a phone, uh, streaming a you know crowd of people or something as they're walking through an area, it's not engaging to me. So I very quickly turn off unless there's something exciting happening within that space. So yeah, I think you know you you can uh, you can go you can go well with live streaming with a purpose. But um, if you don't have a purpose behind pressing that go live button then I think that you can turn people off as well. So just, a, I guess, a word of warning, but certainly not any words of discouragement. Word of warning to all the parents out there too. Did you know your teenagers who have access to some of these tools like Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat may well be going live. They may well be going live with things you don't really want them to go live on, which they might regret going live on. So have a little chat to them after this webinar at some opportune time and ask them if they're going live and to perhaps think about it and maybe ask you before they do whether they do or not, it's another thing, but welcome to the age of parenting in the social era. <laughs> Righto, over to video conferencing. So there's a little bit of a crossover between webinar and video conferencing, but the way I look at video conferencing is it tends to be less people than say a webinar could be 100 people. Video conferencing is generally two, three, four, maybe six, and you can record that as well. Is that how you kind of term video conferencing to explain it to people, Ben? But one thing we we don't do, I mean, that's exactly how to explain it. But one thing we don't do is actually uh, record these for record keeping purposes, which is actually a really good idea. So I'm going to steal that from you. But one thing I'd like to say about video conferencing is being on the coast and doing uh, business in, in Brisbane often, or at least uh, being invited to attend meetings in Brisbane. Um, the, I can't tell you the amount of times recently over the last six months in particular that I've made it a very particular effort to request that those meetings happen either via Google Hangouts or Skype um, where it's appropriate. And the time that saved me just driving up the Bruce Highway and back is, uh, is really significant in the business. So I think as business moves more into the digital space, um, using these tools and becoming familiar with these tools is, is going to be really important to doing business and spending less time on the Bruce Highway.
Absolutely. We are getting an upgrade, but hey, why travel when you don't have to? It's it's more environmentally friendly. Um, you can have your pyjamas on the bottom half. There's lots of fun uh, reasons why this can be good. Um, and I really like not only video conferencing, but also flicking the docs um, to someone real time, text chatting real time, a web link or something supporting the meeting. Um, personally, our team is on Skype all day, every day. And I discourage my team completely to use email unless absolutely necessary. I'd much rather they called me up. I don't necessarily need to see their face, but night sometimes it's nice to see their face or to text chat me real time. Because I say email, that's five whole minutes. I don't have time to wait. Send me it now real time. Let's get this job done. I also like, um, and it's a little bit naughty sometimes, being in the meeting and maybe someone text chatting me a quick question that I can quickly answer while still engaging the meeting so they can move on. And in terms of productivity, things aren't held up. So in terms of the platforms out there with video conferencing, um, Skype has been around a while, Microsoft bought it. They did some things I don't like so much. They then brought back some features um, because the whole community was sort of arcing up. Mostly works okay, sometimes can be a bit patchy. Um, you've also got on the left there, Google Hangout. So that's a pretty good uh, solution. We find with more people that you have on tends to be a bit more robust. And the bottom one, bottom right is one called Zoom. A lot of corporate organizations tend to use that one. So any comments on um, your favorite platform for video conferencing, Ben? Well, clearly, the clear favorite for us is um, is Google Hangouts because we use Google Apps all through the business um, and our our business is on the Google infrastructure. So it's all, you know, seamlessly integrated. So Google apps for us, but Skype is, is certainly the go-to for others. It's a, um, much more widely accepted, I believe by most people. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because we're a very Google centric company too, but for some reason, I think it's just historical. We use Skype um, for the video conference and chat stuff. But um, for those of you who missed um, session two, where I interviewed uh, Sonia Cuff, who's a real Microsoft expert, and I gave some thoughts on Google as a system and all the different options you've got in there. Um, check that out if you haven't already, if you're just starting to get to grips with all the stuff Google does apart from email, because it does Hangouts and it does a whole lot more than that as well, which we covered in webinar two. Now, um, here's yet another option to create news video. We've got screen capture. So do you want to explain screen capture to the audience, Ben, and then some of the tools you can use to do that? Yes, yeah, so we talked about this briefly before the idea of being able to, you know, quickly capture what's on your screen and often incorporating your your voice from your microphone as well. So you can talk someone through something on the screen. It's a great way to train someone in how to use a piece of software very quickly, way more quicker than typing out a, a how to kind of document. Um, so screen capture with audio from your microphone uh, is something that you can use. Not only for that, but also if you're a in an area of business where your expertise is things that are done on a computer, creating video content, which is screen capture video content, either how to's or tutorials, um, is a great way to actually start to build content that's of great value to your audience. So great for marketing, great for adding more content to your to your brand, or even for monetizing that content by being able to sell tutorials or courses and things like that using simply screen capture software, which is often either freely available on your computer or very uh, low cost to, to, to acquire. So yeah, there's more than one ways that it's useful. Um, the different pieces of software you see there, if you've got a Mac, you've got QuickTime built in, which will, which is pretty cool actually. And some people don't realize it can actually, you can plug in your smart device or your Apple device, uh, your iPad or your iPhone into QuickTime on your Mac and record your, devices screen as well, which is really cool. Um, but it'll, it'll obviously record your QuickTime, uh, sorry, your Mac screen. Camtasia is a very widely used tool. Another one there that's, that's not there is called ScreenFlow. So worth checking that out if you're looking for tools for this. I'll just mention Loom as well, which is one that I just discovered this week. Um, I think it's useloom.com to find it. Loom's actually, if you're using Gmail, you can, you get a little video button next to your send button on Loom. And you can quickly just press that button, record a quick screen capture showing your video if you want to be seen or just capturing your screen and then email it directly to someone. So if you're trying to show someone how to do something on a computer, it's literally two or three clicks and the emails off them with the little screen capture ready to go. 
So a really cool tool. There's some other um, platforms there that you can use. Um, there's more than one tool to do anything like we mentioned before. So guys, for your homework, I'd like you to consider some of the strategies that we've been sharing tonight and consider how you could use uh, video in your business to potentially uh, reach more people, uh, increase your productivity or your profitability all through using video. There's been lots of cases shared. Um, here's a case study that Ben shared with me earlier when we were planning tonight's session. This is a local legal firm called Argon Law. So Argon Law contracted Ben's company, Engage Media, and um, pretty out of the box, I guess, to be lawyers and uh, create a whole lot of video content. But, you know, you can see on the screen there, there's lots of different things that people want to know when it comes to legal. So they created some film through Brand Story. They did some client stories to help illustrate how they'd helped as lawyers their clients. They produced videos as part of a blog, and they even used some of the videos and ads. The results they got were pretty astounding, and well done to Ben and his team for getting these. They had on YouTube 20,000 views, which if you consider the Sunshine Coast is about a population of 300,000, that's pretty good uh, market share, with 30,000 minutes watched. On Facebook, 24,000 views and 3.9K minutes watched. And the other really cool outcome, which is something we haven't really focused on that much tonight, but is a really tangible outcome of video, is that their Google page rankings increased because Google loves video content and it particularly likes it when it's on YouTube. So you go create videos, you place them on YouTube and guess what? If people are searching asset protection or bankruptcy and world, Sunshine Coast, lawyers, etc., these guys would have a chance of being ranked. Um, it also got them some good referral partners. So not only were prospective clients and existing clients checking them out, but other um, service providers, accountants and so on were also looking at them and that helped to win that business. Gave them a valuable content library and it also helped to engage their email list. So some really great business outcomes there. So if you are going to do video, some considerations for video formats, you need to think about what kind of video will come out of the device you're planning to film with. Like, are you going to record this thing on mobile or a desktop, as in maybe a webcam, tablet? Are you going to actually get a video camera, hire one, borrow one, buy one, or a screen sharing platform, or are you looking at webinars? Then once you're producing those videos out of that format, you've got to consider what kind of video editing program you'll plan to use. So for instance, if you're probably going to produce it on an iPhone, you might stay in the Mac environment and edit it on iMovie. Um, but you might also supply that to a video editor who will produce it for you. What kind of format is also best for the platform you'll share on? So are you going to upload it to YouTube ultimately or Facebook ultimately or some other thing? Here's a list of some of the most common video formats and probably out of all of those, the .mp4 is the one that universally tends to work the best. Some of the others are what will get output from some um, machines like .mov or move is, is what it's short for, a movie. It comes out of Apple's QuickTime program if you're in that. Whereas if you produce a movie on a Windows environment, you might be well producing a .wmv or Windows media file. Here's some other tools for editing video. iMovie on a Mac's pretty good. Windows Movie Maker's pretty easy to use too. I was pretty proud of myself when I had a milestone birthday. I got a bunch of cool photos and I used iMovie. I'd never used it before and I threw them up and I threw an image up and it produced not a bad movie. I was pretty impressed with myself and I shared it with my friends and they were suitably impressed too. I also, and here's a tip on video, underlaid a cool uh, song that I thought went with the sort of uh, event and it was a song that meant something to me and I thought my friends would enjoy as well. But when I did upload it to my private Facebook group to share it with people who attended the event, it actually only displayed without the music, which kind of didn't make as good an impact because I hadn't thought about copyright and things, even though I was only sharing it to a private audience. So similar to looking for stock image photos for websites and things like that, so too can you look for stock 
music, which is royalty copyright free, to underlay on your movie tracks. And they have some amazing technology built into things like Facebook and YouTube, which you can say, well, they'll never know. How would they even find out? They know straight away and they'll pick up that that is a copyright piece of music material. So do beware. Um, Magisto is quite a cool little app you can get on your phone and produce some good videos. There's Wii Video, there's Videolicious, there's Adobe Spark, and even YouTube itself actually has some video editing capabilities you might like to check out without downloading any of those things. Now here's Ben's top tips for making an awesome video. Um, perfect planning prevents P poor performance. Um, so it's all in the planning, just as if you were going to paint a room, you got to prep it and then you'll get a better result with your paint job. So too goes it with video making as well. Shorter is generally better. Um, say enough, but don't go on once you've stated your message. Captions and visuals are key. If you take the video context in Facebook, for example, when a video plays, um, it doesn't always have produce sound, and that's a good thing, because if you're watching this at work, you'll get caught out that you're actually on Facebook watching videos. So seeing the words come up, I can still consume that content. Not only that, it makes that piece of content that whole mo lot more accessible. Don't forget about audio quality, which you might have to invest in mics and things to get that right. Be consistent with your brand. So if you reflect back to that Argon Law, a lot of the way they were structured and looked and the fonts used were similar to stay on brand for them. And in the end, just do it. You'll improve as you go. Just as you may have once written a blog and you look back and go, gee, that was a bad blog. So too, you might look on your early videos and go, they weren't great, but gee, look how far I've come when you've produced a few. So you've made an awesome video. What do you do with it? Well, be strategic. As Ben has outlined earlier in this presentation, you can't just post and hope. That is not good video marketing. You probably won't, won't get good results from that. You've got to have a plan for it, a clear objective, a clear audience, and so on. You then need to leverage your networks. Post it on each of your social networks if that's where you're getting it out through. Consider who else might post it on your behalf. Ask people to share it. Tag them in and go fish where the fish are. If the target market is business people, then LinkedIn might be the place to post that piece of video content. An example, those legal videos might go quite well in there if they were using the objective of trying to recruit other referral partners. Remember, business is not B2B or B2C. B2B meaning business to business or business to consumer. This is Ben's philosophy. He says it's people to people or P2P, and I'd have to agree with him there in many cases. Also understand the platform you're using and optimize for each. That might mean keeping the video short. 29 seconds is a pretty good video length for Facebook video ads, for instance. And play the long game. You can't just do this once or twice and go, it didn't work. You gotta keep posting video and be consistent before you see those great results like Argon Law. And experiment, play with different formats, different speakers, different types of videos, different times you post and see what cuts through for you. So Ben's made a really uh, generous offer to us where if you want to actually learn more about online video strategies, offering us for free his foundations course and you can go access that at engagevideomarketing.com slash foundation. So thank you, Ben, for that. Thank you for being online tonight. And Ben will also make himself available in the private Facebook group for those of you who are engaged in the full program. And you can even access Ben and sit down with him for a cuppa or have a Skype message with him as he is one of our illustrious mentors that if you're doing the full program, you can log into the online resource portal and actually request him as your mentor. So we've answered a lot of questions throughout the session, so we'll skip past that. And I just want to remind you all about the whole Level Up program. So we're now at level four, or week four, and next week we'll be getting into banking online and gaining efficiencies in the way you do your business banking with point of sale, e-commerce, and looking at some of those solutions. So it's not too late to join. And we would love you to join the program and get access to all of this great content via both webinar and workshop. You pay one fee, just 295, which is uh, the option here, option five. And that gets not only you access, but actually up to three more participants from your company. And you get the mentors and you get the Facebook group. You can though say, I can't 
uh, commit to all of that and just come to a workshop or just hook into the webinars if you like. We don't mind, we just want you learning. If you do do the whole program, as outlined on earlier webinars and on our info session webinar on the events page of our website, levelup.sunshinecoast.qld.gov.au, you get modules, you get webinars, you get lesson resources and workbooks, so you can work at your own pace, at your own time, in your own way. Lots of emails, private Facebook group of mentors, it's really great value. The mentors are particularly great value. I mean, these are people you'd normally have to pay a couple of hundred bucks to go and see, maybe more per hour. And you guys get to access them for free through the program up to a set amount of hours. So do make the most of that if you haven't already. There's Ben, our great presenter tonight, second one in. So he's one of the digital champions or mentors you can access. There's also Sean, there's Luke, there's Mike, there's others listed on our website on the mentors page. Go check them out. Our Facebook group, if you haven't already accessed it, go to the online resource portal, request to join, we'll let you in and you can start joining in the conversation. We've been seeing some great conversations coming through with people already doing the program and getting lots out of it, which is wonderful. Here's our upcoming dates. That's actually a little typo. That should be the 6th of June. <clears throat> we skip a week next week. And so the next one's the 6th of June and onwards. What's on the website is actually up to date, so go by that. Here's our upcoming webinars. Uh, sorry, not webinars, workshops. 20th of June is our next one. It's a morning session this time. We're talking money. We're talking banking, selling, and accounting online. We hope you can make it. As a program participant, you get this for free. Otherwise, $75 would love to see you there. That's discounted by the Sunshine Coast Council. If you'd like to register for the program, and we would love you to, go to levelup.sunshinecoast.qld.gov.au slash register. And for all these upcoming events, and please tell your friends about them, it's the same URL slash events. And finally, we couldn't do this program without our partners. Thanks to all of them. Please go support them. We hope you all have a good night. Thanks for joining today's webinar.